Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, carbohydrates, also known as saccharides or sugars, are the most abundant biomolecules and are made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. These are essential for proper body functioning and provide energy to cells. Based upon their structure, carbohydrates may be classified as monosaccharides, disaccharides, oligosaccharides, and polysaccharides. In the biochemistry laboratory, there are certain tests that we can use to identify whether a sample contains carbohydrate or not, and if it does contain a carbohydrate, what type of carbohydrate is present in the sample. These tests can be used for the detection of carbohydrates in various body fluids, thus helping in disease detection. Today, we will be performing three tests for the identification of carbohydrates. The first test that we will perform is known as the Mollish test. The Mollish test is basically a general test used for the identification of carbohydrates and will give a positive result for all carbohydrates regardless of the fact whether a monosaccharide is present or a disaccharide is present. The principle of this test is based upon the dehydration of the carbohydrate in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to yield an aldehyde which will condense with two molecules of a phenol, usually alpha nephthol, to give a purple or violet colored product. The aldehyde formed is furfural if the sugar present is pentose and hydroxymethyl furfural if the sugar present is a hexose. To proceed with this test, we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube. Next, we will add 2 to 3 drops of alpha nephthol. Mix the contents of the tube to ensure that alpha nephthol mixes well with the sample. Next, we will add 1 to 2 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid to this tube. This step needs to be done carefully since sulfuric acid is corrosive. The formation of a purple or violet colored ring will indicate that a carbohydrate is present in this sample. The main precaution for this test is ensuring proper mixing once alpha nephthol is added since alpha nephthol is dense and tends to settle at the base of the test tube. The second test that we will perform is the Benedict's test which is used for the detection of reducing sugars, which are carbohydrates in which the carbonyl carbon is free for reaction. The Benedict's test make, makes use of the Benedict's reagent, which contains copper 2 sulfate, sodium citrate, and sodium carbonate. Copper 2 sulfate provides copper ions for the reaction. Sodium carbonate provides alkaline conditions for this reaction and sodium citrate prevents the reduction of copper ions during storage of the reagent. The principle of this test is that when an, a carbohydrate is heated 
in the presence of an alkali it yields to form an anediol which reduces copper 2 ions to copper 1 ion these copper 1 ions tend to form the brick red precipitate of copper 1 oxide which is visible at the end of the reaction to proceed with this test we will first take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube this sample we will add 2 ml of benedict's reagent This is then heated for approximately 2 to 3 minutes and checked for color change. Ideally, this heating should be done on a water bath, but if a water bath is not available, direct heating can be done carefully. If the sample contains a carbohydrate, you will notice that the colors of the solution changes from blue to green to yellow to orange and eventually red The formation of this red color indicates that this sample contains a reducing sugar. The last test that we will perform is the iodine test which is used to detect the presence of a polysaccharide namely starch in the sample. The principle of this test is that iodide ions present in the iodine solution get absorbed in the amylose present in the starch molecule and produce a blue black color to proceed with this test we will take 1 ml of the sample in a test tube this sample we will add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution iodine solution is originally brown in color we will add 2 to 3 drops of iodine solution to this iodine solution is originally brown in color the presence of blue black color indicates that this sample contains starch it is worth noticing that all three tests done today are qualitative tests that is they will give us an idea about the identity of the carbohydrate present but not the amount of carbohydrate that was present in the sample